Hey guys, welcome back to the Mount Juliet Library. My name is Carl LaTerza and we're going to be doing another one of our book talks today. It's going to be part of that Who Was series. Now let's start this way. A very profound thought in the world of art is that art reflects the times in which the artist lives. What that means is if we have an understanding of artwork, that's going to give us a better understanding of the time in which that artwork itself was created. And I think you could see that really well with La Pieta. La Pieta over there was done by Michelangelo. And there are so many different ways in which that's going to explain what the early Renaissance itself was like. It's absolutely amazing. I may do that on another book tour. But for the time being, I just want you to understand that when we're talking about art, you've got to kind of like move away from the idea that art is only a sculpture. It's paintings, it's literature, it's architecture. And for today's lesson, it's also going to be music itself. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at two of the greatest influences ever in the history of music, and that's going to be Elvis Presley and the Beatles. Now, I should explain how this whole book talk came about. I was talking about having seen Ringo Starr over at the Ryman uh, not too long ago. Oh, man, if you ever get a chance to see Ringo in concert, he's great. And one of the younger pe uh, people who works over here, when I said Ringo Starr, I got this blank look from her, okay? That's when I knew if people don't know who Ringo Starr is, then we've got to do a little bit of talking about that. But let's start with Elvis Presley first. When somebody calls you the king of rock and roll, man, that's impressive. But that's what Elvis was called. He was called the king of rock and roll. But what you need to understand is that Elvis was following a path that was established by other people before him. Chuck Berry, Jerry Lee Lewis, Bill Haley and the Comets. But what Elvis did is he took it to a new level. He went where literally no man has gone before. Now, before Elvis hooks up with a guy named Colonel Tom Parker, he's pretty much a minor league. He just does regional scenes and things like that. But the colonel realized that Elvis had something that the other singers did not have. He had a magnificent voice, okay? In the same way we're talking about a voice like Frank Sinatra, that's what Elvis was for the 1950s. Once Elvis hooked up with Colonel Tom Parker, what happened is he went from a regional star and he became an international star. Not only did he become an international star, but he became ridiculously rich. By the ripe old age of 21, he was able to buy Graceland. He bought Cadillacs for all of his friends, all of his family. Money was just rolling like it was never going to stop. His particular style of music was a unique blend of blues, gospel, and rock and roll. His singing style was very, very unique, and that led to a lot of controversy. Elvis felt that the music always moved him, and the manner in which the music moved him was not always considered to be very appropriate by most of the parents. Let's take a look over here. This is a picture of Elvis doing Jailhouse Rock, and you notice he's got the greased hair. The musical expression, the greasers, that comes from Elvis Presley. He's got what they call swivel hips. He's moving them back and forth every which way. And that really is accentuated by the tight jeans he wears. As a result of that, he became very controversial. So much so that when he first appeared on Ed Sullivan, the order was you're only going to film Elvis from the waist up. You were not going to film him from the waist down because the actions that he was doing in the 1950s was considered to be lewd. The expression Elvis the pelvis was born as a result of that. Elvis though, because he was so rich and because he wanted to stay so active, he starts to become severely addicted to amphetamines and barbiturates. His life spins out of control. The one guiding force in his life was his mother, but when his mother passed away, he was pretty much out of control. His father just looked at Elvis as being a paycheck. Between the compulsive eating disorder and the drug use, Elvis dies almost to the day, August 16th, 1977. The expression, Elvis has left the building, is going to be related to Elvis actually passing. Bottom line is, even the king of rock and roll can't beat drug addiction. And that's exactly what happens over there. Now, in the 1960s, we're now going to bring it up to the Beatles. In the 1960s, American music was subjected to something that was, that was called the British Invasion. 
Musical groups like the Rolling Stones, the Dave Clark Five, Herman's Hermits, I'm Henry the Eighth, I am, the Zombies, the Animals, all of these groups started to become very important in American music. But none of that could have ever happened without the Beatles being the leading edge. In the same way Elvis changed American music, the Beatles changed American music and international music as well. They had a very unique and a vibrant so uh, sound. Now they were raised in a lower to middle class neighborhood in Liverpool, England. And like Elvis, they came from very modest beginnings. Of the four, only George came from a stable environment, meaning having both a mother and a father. The other three didn't have a father in their life at all. In 1956, John forms a group called the Quarrymen. 1957, Paul joins. 1958, George joins. And in 1962, after a, a shakeup in the uh, personnel that are going to be found in the group, Ringo is going to replace Peter Best, and what we now understand as being the Beatles comes into existence. Just want to mention a little bit about uh, Ringo for a second. Out of all the Beatles, he had the hardest life, uh, life. His father leaves when he's three years old. At six, he gets an appendicitis attack that's so severe, he lapses into a coma for 10 weeks. He has to stay in the hospital for a whole entire year. Eventually, he's healthy enough to go back to school, at 13, he developed severe breathing problems, so much so that he ends up being hospitalized for two years. He finally gives it up and realizes at the age of 15, he's not going to be able to make it in school, and he drops out. The Beatles don't catch on right away in England. They go to Germany. In Germany, they play long, long hours, but what they do is they learn their craft, and they come into contact with a man named Brian Epstein. Just as Elvis had Colonel Parker, so did the Beatles have Brian Epstein. He cleans them up. He says, no, guys, you're going to look professional. You're going to wear a suit. You're going to have your hair looking just nice. You're going to be very, very professional. Please Please Me is going to be a huge hit in England under Epstein's leadership. It flops in the United States, but something called Beatlemania is going to come into existence. In 1963, a man named Murray the K, Murray the K and his swinging soiree, introduces the Beatles music with She Loves You and people in the United States go nuts. That Beatlemania in England comes over to the United States. The Beatles come to the United States February 7th of 1964. Here are some different images. When they land, it's like the president or the queen of England is landing. There are crowds all over creation. And now we're going to see the Beatles performing on February 9th on the Ed Sullivan Show. But just like we saw with Elvis, being young, being rich, being impulsive, they do stupid things. In March of 1966, John says the Beatles are more famous than Christ. Whoa, that did not go over very well, especially in places like Tennessee, the gold buckle of the Bible Belt. And what they do is they have a burning of anything related to the Beatles, their albums, their music, books, all Beatle memorabilia is going to be burned. All good things come to an end. 1967, the Beatles record a monumental album called Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. In 1969, they record their last album. That's going to be Abbey Road. And there you see that iconic picture of the Beatles walking across the street in Abbey Road. That's going to be the last recorded album. Let It Be is going to be the last released album. In April of 1970, Paul announces to the world that the Beatles have broken up. Think about this, guys. In the United States, the Beatles came into existence for only six years. Yet the impact that they had on the music world was Im immeasurable. After they break up, George becomes a solo act, although later on he joins with the Traveling Wilburys. John creates the Plastic Ono Band. Paul creates Wings. And Ringo creates his all-star band. Tragically, it all comes to an end um, on December 8, 1980, with the murder of John Lennon. George writes a tribute song to him. The name of the song is All Those Years Ago. In 2001, when George passes, 
what's going to be done is this, they're going to take that tribute song to John and they're going to make a tribute video to John and George. And what I've got listed over there is a link. And that'll really give you a nice feel for what it was like, the way people felt about the Beatles. Last few thoughts, folks, I've included a series of links, okay? Albert Einstein once said that he was able to advance in science because he stood on the backs of giants. So it was with the Beatles, okay? So it was with Elvis, for that matter. They built upon the foundation that was established by others. The first one is going to be a melody of music created by Richard, Little Richard, and Tom Jones. What I want you to do is I want you to listen to Little Richard singing, and then I want you to listen to the video Twist and Shout by the Beatles, and you're going to see the impact that they had on each other like that, folks. And the last video that we've got over there is going to be Revolution. Revolution is going to show how the Beatles became more socially aware, and that song is really going to reflect the times in which the artist lives. Look at those video guys and enjoy it. Welcome to my world, the 1950s and the 1960s. Take care, guys.